Hello? Don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so long story short, I've been walking all over this place forever now. Trying to figure out where, where I'm supposed to go. And I still don't know. Hello? Sure is creepy when you're walking around in the quiet. I hate it if something was to happen and scare me right now. No? Nothing? Alright. Alright, let's go to another side of the building and we'll see if there's something going on somewhere else. Sorry, impatience, laundry, storeroom, and archive. 12, where's 12 at? I was like 12 could be all the way down at the very end. Could that be where we're going? When you were sent to a lunatic asylum, you lost the right to possess anything. Everything you arrived with was packed up and stored here, even the clothes you were wearing. In case you were released one day, but far too many never left. So like, free stuff? Um, ain't no way I could see what's in there. Alright, what about these? Nothing important? Anything? Anything? Come. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Am I supposed to do something with this stuff? Hello? I can't see. I can't see nothing. I don't know what to do. What are we doing, man? We gotta find something. There's gotta be something in this room. Y'all made me come in here for something. Hmm. There must be a file with my name in the filing cabinet somewhere. Oh, really? Is that the clue? Is that my clue? Oh. Uh. I don't remember my name. <laughs> Alright, so I don't remember my name. That must mean that I am a crazy lunatic. Why is it so difficult, man? Oh! Dear Mother, oh. please, I beg you, get me out of this place. I'm so frightened here. You were right. I know I was wrong. I understand. I'm so ashamed. If only you knew how much. But now I'll behave myself, I promise. Now things will be fine. I'll work hard. I'll be very good. Your daughter, Renee. This letter. It was Renee's letter. Just as she wrote it back then. But it was never sent. Why? Why did this happen? Huh. I received your letter, Mom. You tell me to be patient and strong, while I only feel fear and pain. Huh. And you don't write to me anymore. If only these words could be my soul, I'd tell you what was happening to me. The kids want to kill me. Ugh. They all look the other way and tell me what to do. I don't understand. She helps me. But what have they done to her? Can you tell me? Will you help me? Renee. Wow. Montefoscoli, July 7th, 1940. My dear daughter, I have received no news from you. You have not contacted me in months. I'm sorry, but I don't have the money to come and visit you. Do you remember Mr. Onofrio? He'll soon be in Volterra for business. I've asked him if he would be kind enough to ask the director for some news about you. I hope he'll bring me some good news when he returns. So that's who that gal was. Please write to me. I know that I was strict with you. You have to forgive me. 
I didn't think. I've given Mr. Onofrio a new doll for you. You told me that you lost yours, and I know you loved it so much. It's not as nice as your Charlotte, but I hope that it will comfort you nonetheless. Keep your chin up, darling. Everything will be fine, you'll see. Mom. Huh. Not delivered. So now these were delivered. Montefoscoli, October 12th, 1940. My dear daughter, I've written two letters to you and have received no reply. Every day, I'm anxiously waiting for a letter. Mr. Onofrio's back. He brought you the doll. Do you like it? He told me he was unable to speak to the director, but managed to see you. I pray for you every day. Even Don Gino said a prayer for you during Sunday Mass. Isn't that nice? I've made up my mind, Rene. I'm bringing you home. Oh? I've already written to the director. I told him that I'll take care of you. I'm not very well at the moment and can't work, but I'll get better soon, you'll see. And as soon as I can make the journey, I'll come and fetch you. I know you're suffering a lot. But please be strong, I beg you. Mom will come to fetch Renee, won't she? Mom is good, but she's not well. That's why that man came. Huh. The doll. Renee could have played with it while she was waiting for her to arrive. But Renee didn't have it with her. Is it one of Mom's lies? She knew that she'd hurt Renee and... No, no, Mommy's good. That man brought it. We've just remembered who he is, haven't we? It was Renee who was wrong. The doll's here. I know that for sure. Perhaps she's been abducted like all the others and is locked up here somewhere. Oh, no. So what, we're just looking for a doll now? We gotta look for the new doll that Mommy sent. So where would this dolly be? If they locked it up somewhere, it's got to be... Hmm, where do you lock up something like that in an insane asylum? Let's look for the second doll. It'll be among the bundles of the patient's belongings. Where is that at? Hmm. What did we move that for? Um, what we keep looking up there for? Oh! Oh, okay. Now we can open the bundle on that table in front of the window. Yes. Dolly? You see? Mom was good. I was bad. Mom was worried about Renee and Charlotte. I abandoned Charlotte. We've abandoned her. Sweet. So we got us a new doll. Um, uh, chapter 10. Can we take it with us? What about shoes? Oh, she sent us some shoes. Look at that. Wow. Some... No, okay. All right. So now what? What are we doing now? Um. Let's look for Charlotte. Charlotte! We have abandoned her. Good. Will she still be where we abandoned her? Under the warm lights? She better be. Creepy doll. Creepy doll. Excuse me, creepy doll. Warm lights. Warm lights! <laughs> What? Oh! This stuff gets creepy every time I see it. Where are we going? Can I look around? I can! Oh, wow! Um... Um, that's you again. 
No. Can somebody help me? I didn't, I didn't do, do anything. anything. I just obeyed I orders. Only oh, obeyed no. Orders. No. Surely no. Was no. Away. no. Mom I will come and get us. She loves us. I only even though we're orders. Leave us alone. Leave us alone. Sure. I didn't do anything. I only obeyed orders. No. Help me. Mom Help me. Come and get us I didn't now. do anything. I only obeyed orders, yes. even though we're bad. Where are we going? Mom won't leave us alone. I didn't do anything. I went gone away. I oh. only obeyed orders. I heard screaming. Us get us <laughs> she loves us, even though we're bad. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I only obeyed orders. I obeyed orders. Um. Oh my god. Bunch of crazies. Bunch of psychos. What are we doing? All right, there's some screaming coming from that room. Oh no. Oh no. Is she dead? Oh. Please tell me you're not coming for me now. No. No. <laughs> No, 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 we can't go in there. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, they're screaming. Oh, 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 I can't see. What's going on? Are y'all operating on me? Oh, come on, struggle, struggle, we gotta get up. No, 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 no. Please, please don't. Leave me alone. Please, please. <laughs> please. Oh, help me, help me, help. Oh, what the heck? What, 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 what? I can't, I can't move my face. I can't move my face. Oh no, what is that? What is that? No, quit it. <laughs> Help me! Somebody help me! Um. Um. They're all staring. What's the matter with y'all? Let me up, man. I want to get up. Please. Please. What is that? What is that? Oh God! No! <laughs> No! Oh, oh, oh. Please let me get up. I don't want to do this no more. <laughs> uh, uh, oh God! That's what that machine was for. Is that, is that really what that was for? Huh. Okay. That's messed up, man. So messed up. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Huh. <sighs> Finally, the ringing is gone. Oh, my God. So there were so many people in here. And they were all about to go in there and get whatever the hell that was. So what now? What am I gonna do now? Uh, huh. Huh. What was that doctor writing, sitting at his desk? Oh, oh, oh! You want me to go see? Would it still be here? There's no way it's still here. Okay, never mind. September 7th, 1938. The patient frequently indulges in recriminations expressed in an explosive tone of voice. This morning she threw away the milk, saying it was full of urine, spittle, and all kinds of other filth. Crazed, she hears voices that order her to do things. She says she heard children singing and that they were locked up in a school. 
January 20th, 1939. Introverted, dazed, cannot focus on anything. When questioned and stimulated, she starts crying and weeping. At other times, she laughs. June 1st, apathetic, eats very little. She refuses to be touched, does not respond. Spends her time in the grounds. The cooks report that she sits on a bench in front of the kitchens. October 14th, return of impulsive behavior. This morning, she asked for two eggs to make tzabayoni, but when she got them, she threw them up in the air. Excited, clamorous, slightly confused, takes her clothes off. December 8th, tied to bed for 15 days. High-spirited, tends to make witty comments and use vulgar words, laughs hysterically and pleasures herself. The nurses report that about two weeks ago she remained in the showers on her own and didn't want to leave. They said that when they took her away, she swore at them and then lashed out and bit them. Oh. Two nurses had to be treated for their injuries. They've kept her tied to the bed since then. Transferred to the slightly agitated ward. From the care of Dr. B to the care of Dr. C. I was with Amara in the showers. My memories are terrifying. They're not real, are they? Oh, crap. Here we go. Okay, I was with Amara in the showers. My memories are terrifying. They're not real, are they? Um, yeah, they're just a figment of my imagination. What reality are we referring to? And is what you are, whether it's real or not? Memory is what you are, whether it's real or not. Um. Oh, crap. Alright, let's go with... This one. <laughs> December 15th. Dr. C. Patient notes. The abnormality of her psychic state has induced her to lead a life which is irregular and tends towards delinquency. Of fickle and flighty character, she regularly discards her household duties and engages in occasional prostitution. What? Prostitution? No one would have ever believed a lunatic, let alone a lunatic who lives in the worst sort of sin. Could such a person ever have been subject to sexual violence? Certainly not. Her mental deficiency oh. makes her deaf to the reprimands of her family. She has shown suicidal tendencies. She was brought to the ward yesterday, agitated and hysterical. Treated with cardiazol, two injections a week for five weeks. They were only trying to confuse us with the therapy, and my God, they succeeded. It was as if they wanted to instill the madness into us. It was the only treatment they could try. There were so many of you, what could they do to manage that hell when there were so few of them? The ends always justify the means for those who wield power. Okay, let's see here. Um, what could they do to manage the hell that... Um, well, I mean, you could look at this from two different angles. Like, from them, I think B is looking at it from their angle. And C... Let's go with B. Oh, God. The therapies removed the light for a while, but also all her will, desire, and hope. The important thing was to keep us quiet. To a certain extent, they were trying to make you feel better. You were lost souls. Um, the therapy was terrible and painful, but it was the only treatment that existed. Hmm. Let's go with... No, let's go with this one. Oh, God. June 2nd. After a long period of calm and improvement, the patient is very agitated today and vehemently refuses to submit to a gynecological examination. She swears and curses those helping her, flailing her arms and hitting them. According to reports by Dr. B, the patient has been subjected to periodic checkups since she had a spontaneous abortion about two years ago, in her third month of pregnancy. Conception occurred after she had sexual intercourse with a stranger who sneaked into the hospital grounds. Details are contained in the charges filed at police headquarters in Volterra, 
a copy of which is attached to these clinical notes. ES therapy. That's how the reality is concealed. It has all been planned very carefully. How the reality is concealed, it has all been planned very carefully. Perhaps it doesn't refer to Renee. At least not that Renee. Yes, I well planned the institution had to protect itself. Why hide? I don't think we were af I don't think we were afraid of you. You were worthless for everyone. June 13th. The nurses report that she descended into a state of great mental confusion after receiving her mother's letter. She threw her soup over another inmate because she was very anxious and then punched a nurse. Impulsive flails about her. She rails against the doctor in vulgar terms while he is examining her, lashes out and spits. Block all correspondence to give the patient no further reason to become agitated. August 20th, tied to bed. The nurses report that the patient is extremely agitated after the visit of a relative or family friend. Two days later, she is still shouting all the time that he commands her, that she must obey and harm herself, and that she is not Charlotte. All visits forbidden, constrained to bed, and intensification of ES therapy until we achieve results. No contact with the outside. That way nobody knew what was happening within these walls. Human misery was thrown in here and locked away to make the world forget about it. The people who were in here were no longer human beings as far as society was concerned. The important thing was to keep you quiet. You don't remember what happened when the letters arrived. How can you judge? God knows how much suffering they spared you. Oh lord. Um. Oh, oh my god. I want to go with A, but I feel like B is probably the right answer. Let's go with A. Oh wow! Wow. March 3rd. Alert. Correct attitude. Replies when questioned. The nurses report that the patient is calm. She washes and looks after herself. She affirms the existence of a certain Amara. She says that Amara is a patient who disappeared when she was moved to this ward. No confirmation. Probably a regressive hallucination. Evaluate transfer. Did I imagine Amara? That's not possible. She was there. I know she was there. I feel it. She must have left some traces of her presence. Alright, so what, we just gotta prove Amara was real? Huh. How do we do that? How do we do that? Where's it coming from? I don't know which way it's coming from. Amara? Amara? Where are you? Alright, I think it's dying down. It's back that way. It's got a... I think it's dying down. Yeah. So it's got to be back here somewhere. Oh, I'm going to have to search all these rooms again, aren't I? Amara? Amara? How do I prove you existed? It's got to be on one of these beds, I bet. They tied her to a bed. She's got to be here somewhere. Amara? It's quiet. It got quiet. We can look for her things in the storeroom containing the bundles of the patient's belongings oh. on the upper floor. Alright, alright, so... Are we on the top floor already? We must find her things. We must find her things. <laughs> okay, is this the top floor? Are we on the top floor? Yeah, we're on the top floor. Okay. Okay, so where you at, Amara? Your stuff has to be in this room back here. Is 
it's got to be here somewhere. I know you exist. Let's see where? Is that it? These are Amara's things, I'm certain. All right. All right, so he found her stuff. March 12th, 1938. The young girl Renee arrived today. Poor thing, she was terrorized. You see? She remembers the first time we met. I talked to her mother, the dear lady, and she expressed her fears to me and I promised I'd keep an eye on her daughter. The lady told me her daughter's doll had been taken away and this worried her. Because when she becomes depressed, as she is now, Renee barricades herself in her room and can't communicate. The doll becomes her voice, eyes and ears. Dr. B said I'll soon get out of here. I'm sorry. I'm so sad to leave Renee. I won't be able to protect her anymore. My poor friend. She was hoping to be able to get out of here, but nobody ever leaves this place. That poor girl is really ill. I am the only one she ever speaks to. I told her I was leaving and she stared at me, saying that I would never leave. It was quite unnerving. And then she started to cry. I felt like crying too. She didn't say anything else. What worries me is that I'm sure that terrible man is watching her. He was the one who brought her here. And of all the good people, why did it have to be him? She knew. I told her everything. She knew about that man. That's why they wanted to make her disappear from my life. But I instructed a nurse friend of mine to keep an eye on her, and I'm sure she will, because she's a good woman. Her friend the nurse, I vaguely remember, she worked on this ward. Um, somebody down that hall. What's going on down the hallway, man? Let's look for signs of the nurse in the nurse's room on the upper floor. Nurse's room? Is this it? She worked mostly in the Maragliano Pavilion. Let's get out of here and find that pavilion. Renee was alone here. Charlotte had abandoned her. And without Charlotte, Renee couldn't communicate with the outside world. Mother knew that. Alright, so what are we looking for? There was a different pavilion nearby. Let's follow the signs. Um, Dolly? Where the hell did you go? Alright, so how do we, uh, we gotta go to another pavilion. How do we do that? A different pavilion. I guess we gotta go downstairs and leave? Different pavilion. Did I just hear something? It sounded like somebody was writing something. Alright, it looks like it's not as bright outside now. Maybe something's different outside. Um Hello? Hello? Are they talking about that little building out there? That's the only other building here. It's the only... Um... Um... Uh, I'm trying to hit that light switch. I'm trying to hit the light switch. Is this where I need to be going? Cause this why is there a mattress down here, man? That's so weird. 
so weird. Okay, um, we're just gonna take it. This is not where we're supposed to be. All right, so we gotta find another pavilion. It's gotta be that building right there, right? That's like the only place they let you go. Oh, the fence is gone. Guys, the fence is gone. There used to be a fence right here. There used to be a fence, I swear. I swear there used to be a fence. Music's picking up. The music? I hear it. Am I in danger? Well, there's something. Where's this lead? Oh, I bet this right here is if I came out the back door of the, of the building. Wow. Okay, let's keep following this path and see where it leads. Oh! We gotta be on the right track. It's gotta be this way. Hello? Ah, oh, look at... Loading? Yeah. We gotta be on the right track. Doesn't look like that leads anywhere. Oh man, we're on a leisurely little walk. Got, got stuff in my hands. I'm bringing it to something. I'm, I'm looking for something. So. This is getting creepy. This is getting really creepy. Am I going to have to find a way to turn the power on here too? I don't think there's a door over here. I bet the door is over here. This place is so creepy, man. Okay. Maybe there's not a door over here. They're doing construction over here, too. That's weird. Oh, I really thought there was going to be a way around here. Alright, so let's figure out... Well, we got a wheel... Well, that's not a wheelchair. That's like a... Uh, um... Oh! She's kind to everyone. Even me. I felt a little better when I saw her. Oh, God. The sick children laughed and played with her. Not even they could frighten me. Don't annoy Renee. She's a princess here. Didn't you know? What? She told stories. She said there was a war out there. But they stared at me and frightened me. Oh my god, there's some creepy kids. They would come to look for me in the evening and then no one would have protected me. Not even you, Charlotte. Am I right? Um... Um, what in the hell? Oh, oh, come back. Give me a ride up out of this place, man. I need to go. Chapter 12. We've made our way to chapter 12 already. Oh, my God. Chapter 12 starts off a new building. What was that? Oh, oh. Alright, well we can't ride this thing. They don't broke it out of hill.